Hey all you YouTube viewers out there, this is Natalie Wilson and I'm coming to you from my High Heel Diary studio. This is my baby. This is, I guess my first, well it is my first YouTube video. Um, it's kind of an introduction to me um, and my story and why I'm choosing to do, you know, uh, a YouTube um page or if you call it whatever you guys call it out there it's all new to me <laughs> i'm not a frequent youtuber um but i've gotten into it i've gotten to all the social media because it's a great way to get um information out there and it's a great way to get my story out there as a means to talk to other women to inspire them to get them to talk about their issues as well so is this is really just a candid chill sit down kind of conversation from me to you and as you see I'm really comfy I'm gonna have some tea <laughs> um, High Heel Diaries was born out of my own personal struggle um, dealing with breast cancer I've had breast cancer three times I am 43 mother of three and the first time it came about was when I was 35. I just um, had my son maybe uh, three months prior, so September 11th. And I had the other two little girls. And having three children just deemed to be a uh, very a daunting task, if you will. And I was getting tired of having this little boy nibble on my breast. So I was you know determined to wean him and so I did and a few months later so February of 09 um, in the shower and you know no pain no no redness no nothing I had felt um, a lump on the one side of my breast in the shower so I mean I was never one of those people that did the frequent you know put your hand behind your um, head and lie down and feel around one time a month to see the differences in your breast. I was never that kind of person. So just so happened to feel a lump and I made an appointment with my doctor and sent me for a mammogram and ultrasound. They both came back um, saying nothing, maybe calcifications of the breast. And I guess they're putting two and two together because I just finished nur nursing and that maybe one of my milk ducts were clogged. So um, I, I said, you know what, this is not nothing. I could feel this, I could pull on it and I wanted it checked out further so I booked an appointment I got a referral to a specialist um, a reconstructive doctor and she said you know let's watch it and take it out in six months if it doesn't change we'll take it out anyways and and see what happens so she did the lumpectomy took it out and turned out two weeks later I went just thinking I'm just gonna get my stitches out and hear that it was nothing but it was um, breast cancer. So DCIS, which is breast cancer of the milk duct, it's ductal carcinoma in situ. Um, it's an early stage breast cancer, but mine was a high grade aggressive growing. So had I not taken it out when I did, um, it would have metastasized quicker and turned to, you know, something further and moved to lymph nodes and wherever else it could have gone to. So I was glad I took it out. Um, within that two week period, the doctor sent me to do an MRI to check and uh, lo and behold, there were some suspicious areas around that marginal area where they took out the lump. So she came back and she said, Natalie, you know, you have two options here. You, we can either go in and take out some more breast tissue to hopefully get all those suspicious areas. Your breast will be left somewhat deformed, but we can address that. Or you can go in and do a subcutaneous mastectomy, which is leave your nipple and then go in behind and take out predominantly most of your breast tissue. So um, let me close this door, my kids are coming home. <laughs> so um, I chose the, the second route because I thought, I'm young, I'm 35 and I don't want to worry about this happening again. So I think the more, more breast tissue I take out is the better off I'll be. So we did it that way and I told her I just, I just had this desire to get rid of both, both um, for a couple of reasons. Um, a, I would always worry that it would come on the other side. Um, and then secondly, I thought if I'm going to do reconstruction, I'd rather do both breasts at the same time so that they look proportionate. So, you know, we went ahead and did that. Long story short, with the reconstruction, I, 
I had a lot of problems. Um, my, my breast didn't cooperate, if you will. <laughs> and um, I had 12, 10 surgeries with that one doctor to try to rectify this whole um, breast reconstruction, reconstruction problem. I formed a lot of scar tissue. I had two blood transfusions. I formed hematomas. My breast got yay big and black and blue and I had to be rushed back into the hospital after, you know, a surgery two weeks prior. Um, and so because it was one side at a time, they only dealt with the, the bad side first. Um, it was one side at a time. So everything that happened on one side happened to the other pretty much. So it was could have been five surgeries, but because it was both breasts, it was 10 surgeries. Well, this doctor was at odds, didn't know what else to do. She's like, I'm going to find another doctor for you. You know, thank you to her because a lot of doctors would say, you know what, this is all we can do for you. So, you know, you're going to have to live with this. So anyways, found another doctor that did a procedure um, using human cadaver tissue. The human cadaver tissue um, is obviously like thoroughly cleansed and all that. Um, they use it to form a hammock in your breast in order to hold your implants. Um, it's a two to three step surgery, so two to three surgeries in order to get to the end. So the first surgery would be to put the tissue in, um, attach it to your muscle. Second surgery would be to add fat, so graft fat from one, from one area of your body to your breast. And then the third surgery would be grafting more fat if necessary. So. Um, I went that route and my breasts were coming along and I was at my last surgery, 13, number 13, it's supposed to be lucky number 13 for me and um, that was in uh, June of 2016, so just last year and had the surgery and prior to that though I, I have to mention that my nipple on my right side was kind of looking funny and acting funny and I thought maybe my breast nipple is just like ready to give up because this was the one that I almost lost because um, during the surgeries, the other 10 surgeries, some of the times my breast nipple had to be taken off and put back on. So, um, thought that that was a nipple that was about to die. So I said, you know what, just while you're going in and doing your surgery, doc, will you please just check on that nipple? So she came back after surgery to say that the biopsy results of the nipple came back that I had nipple cancer. So, okay, you deal with it, you go through your emotions, which I'll talk about all the emotional issues after. I'm just talking about what I went through physically. Um, so took off the nipple and areola, so a big chunk of your breast has to come out to take out your nipple and areola. It's not just, you know, take out that circle. And um, I, so many surgeries, so took off the nipple and areola and then um, I formed uh, complications due to the amount of tissue that was removed and because I still had an implant in, removing all that tissue and then pulling me back together and sewing me back up deemed to be problematic because now my tissue and skin is so thinned out that I was forming like open holes, pressure pressure ulcers they call them, underneath my breast, like literally open holes in my skin where I was just oozing and bleeding. So um, the doctor had to bring me back in and do another surgery. And only because of those complications and her diligence with wanting to make sure that everything was okay and that she got all the nipple and areola cancer, the nipple cancer, she went in and took out some more tissue and come to find out that I had the DCIS that I had in 08 had come back in two spots in my breast. So in the end, I had another surgery. This was surgery number four in that summer, well, last summer, and um, she had to remove my nipple altogether, my breast altogether, excuse me. So I have one fully reconstructed breast, feels natural, and at this point, I have nothing on this side. I have a prosthesis in, and I'm learning to live with it. It's part of my every morning when I get dressed. You know, I just have to be careful about what I wear and, you know, because it could show. And I'm not finding that they're making uh, round color prostheses. It's uh, all flesh colored, like light colored. So it's, um, <laughs> you know, if it shows by chance, it's like, okay, there's someone knows or something there. But really, I don't really care. I talk about it candidly. Um, what I have come to find in the end of all this 
in the end, after my summer 16, Drake had, you know, come out with that song at the right time. Um, summer 16 was a difficult summer for me, but it was also uh, a great summer for me because in the end, I realized so much. I learned so much about me and my perseverance and my strength and my courage. And I knew that I would be okay. It didn't matter if I had a breast or not. I, I was feeling the strength was exuding. It was coming out of me and it, it just showed. And I didn't even realize that people were noticing and people were picking up on that. And they've always done so with me and always told me that, but I never really took it anyway. I just like, oh, thank you. You know, as women, we tend to just, you know, get up and go and do what we have to do, you know, have a child. I've had three cesareans, you know, two weeks later, I'm up and about and doing everything I need to do as a mom and, you know, you know, back to work and all that stuff. And you, you don't take time for you because it's just, it's just natural for women to have to do what they have to do. You got to do what you got to do, right? So I never really thought much about all that I went through and I never really took it to heart and said, you know what? Oh my gosh, I've dealt with so much. It was just something I needed to do. All those surgeries, it was 16 surgeries in total, and they were all surgeries that kind of to me just had to be done. I, I had to have them because I had to get to the next step, right? And I had setbacks, not my fault, nobody's fault. My, my body was just reacting, and but that was a step back and I had to go forward. So therefore, if there was another surgery, I had to have it. And in my mind, all those, you know, all those surgeries, all I could think of was that I need my breasts. I need my breasts and my, I need to look like a woman. Otherwise, I won't be a woman. And for me to take off my clothes and look at myself in the mirror at that time, um, it was indicative of being a woman. And if I didn't have a breast, then to me, I wasn't healed and I wasn't whole. And I mean, that's how I thought then. And, and things have definitely changed now. Um, shoot, I, I mean, I'd walk around naked and be proud of it if I could, but I don't want to scare people. So <laughs> I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the fact that I don't have one breast. Um, I walk around the house without my prosthesis most of the time. People come over, you know, that know me, know what I've gone through, and I, and I don't rush to put it in. And I've learned to be okay with that. And more, more importantly, I've, I've learned that talking about it helped me heal. Talking about it was, was so, so good for me. And not only for me, but for those I was talking to. And I, it, it felt good to hear people say, Natalie, you're, you, you've helped me. You know, you've encouraged me, you've inspired me to go and speak to a doctor, speak to, you know, a friend. I've been feeling something or my friend has been feeling something and now she's going to go to the doctor. And it makes me feel good that, you know, I'm getting people out there. I'm getting people to go and, and do what they need to do in order to take care of their health. And I'm educating people about things that I've learned. You know, I'm teaching them and showing them what I've learned because what I knew in 2008 wasn't what I know now. So... I, I formed High Heel Diaries as a way to get my story out there and in turn get women to feel secure enough to come and talk about their stories. Because when they see a woman who, who looks strong, um, and I am strong, but when they see a woman that has gone through what they've gone through um, and, and raise themselves up and keep going, um, I feel that it's, it's, it's an encouraging um, factor for them and that's all I want to do for people is I want to encourage them so you know I'm, I'm here to do that and I formed High Heel Diaries I'm not going to get up and move my camera around for you to see the logo but you will see me and you will see more about what I'm doing I'm going to be doing motivational speaking I'm going to be doing events I'd love to do you know fashion shows and, and anything that's, you know, indicative of, of inspiring women and helping women to, to feel better and to, to come out and talk and share and inspire each other. Um, I, I want to just touch base a little bit on the different uh, emotions and feelings that women go through when they're dealing with emotional or physical struggles, when they're going through a journey. 
Um, like I said, I didn't even realize that I was going through all these these emotions. You know, I just found that because I had so much time um, home through this through 2016, I had so much time home, and I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of investigating, and um, I came across a story by a, a woman, a doctor or an author named Gail Goodwin, and she she kind of pointed out 10 stages of healing and explained them. And it was funny, as I read them, I was like, whoa, I, I went through those stages of healing. I, I went through those stages. I went through um, denial. Uh, I went through the anger. I went through everything. I went through the moving on. I went through like throwing myself in there and, and getting busy as it was a way of, of saying, Okay, I can't, I can't fathom that I'm dealing with all this. So as long as I'm doing a bunch of other stuff, I'm good, right? So I was trying to sweep it under the carpet like as if it never was happening. And I, God, I, I went through the depression. I mean, I have to tell you, I, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Like I remember I had my three children in the car on numerous occasions and I'm driving and I'm, I'm going over a bridge and, and I had this urge on many occasions to drive the car over the bridge. It was just so overwhelming. Um, uh, as a side though, you have to know that I was on a medication called tamoxifen, which is a, a pill that is supposed to help um, reduce the rate of cancer coming back. And with that um, can throw you into some signs of um, premenopause. So premenopausal symptoms. It doesn't like throw you into it, but and I guess with, with women that are dealing with that, those who are dealing with it might know better than I do. I'm not there yet. But um, I, I was going through a wealth of emotion and up and down range of, and I was depressed. I ended up on antidepressant pills. Um, I nitpicked at everything. Um, everybody in my life can, can attest to that. So I was, I was a very difficult person. Um, and you, you, you go through all that. So on top of the tamoxifen, um, you know, showing those implications within me, um, I also just believe that just dealing with what, with what I was dealing with emotionally was causing me to, to react in, in different ways because I wasn't talking about it. I was just internalizing everything. And it's not good. It's not good for, for anyone to do that. And... Um, so now, you know, I've gone through all those stages, like I said, and I've come now to the end. And it took, hey, it took eight years. But eight years later, I've come to this place where this feeling, I have this feeling of overwhelming need to, to help. Overwhelming need to support and to give back. And it's not only to women dealing with breast cancer, but to women, all women. All women that are dealing with or have dealt with any issue. Any, you know, stressful, personal, emotional, physical issue, you know, it could be, you know, abuse of any type. It could be, you know, dealing with their marriage issues, their marital issues, divorce, separation, um, loss of a child, death. You know, I, I've had to deal with, with loss of a child, like, while it was growing inside of me at four months, we lost it. I've had to deal with death of my sister. My sister was shot at 24, so 14 years ago, um, unsolved. We have no answers to that. So, and you know, and within, uh, I'd say, a year and a half period, I've lost an uncle to brain cancer and a, my grandfather. He, he lived a good life, but, you know, it was all at one time. So coming from never, never having to have dealt with anything like that, losing a child, death, death, cancer, and, and many other emotional issues which everybody deals with, you know. Um, I have the experience now to say I've been there, done that, and I can sympathize, I can empathize, I can understand, I can support, and I can help. And that's ultimately all I want to do. So. I am doing motivational speaking. I am speaking in front of um, large groups, small groups, so you can hit me up. Um, 
I have a website, highhilldiaries.com. Um, this should be my first video you'll see on highhilldiaries.com. Um, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, um, Natalie Wilson or High Hill Diaries. Um, what else? Instagram. So I do a lot of motivational posts. I do Monday morning um, uh, motivational quotes. Um, I do blogs. So sometimes I'm just, you know, puttering about town and, and something might happen and I just feel compelled to want to talk about it. So I'll write about it. And like in Christmas, at Christmas time, there is a, a story that I wrote. It's on my um, Facebook page and Instagram. And I wrote about it because it, it just shows a little bit about humanity and how much people really need each other, no matter how hard and cold they might look or, you know, how they put up this front. Like, we all need support and we all need each other. So, I wrote about it. It's called The Woman um, in Need of a Hug. And, um, yeah, uh, a lot's going on. And I, I just want everybody to to please follow me. I'm, I'm new to the lingo, so like me, follow me, love me, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm here, and, I, and anybody that has any ideas about things that I can do um, to help women, um, please shout me out. My email address is um, highheeldiaries at gmail.com. And please remember that heal is H-E-A-L. So it's all about healing. Um, but as you'll see, you know, a lot of my, my logos, my branding, we have this high heel. So a blingy pink high heel. And of course, that is a true part of me. I, I love to, to dress up and, and feel good. And, and, you know, I usually always have a pair of heels on. I don't ever go out without heels on. Well, out to a party anyways. Um, and I do those things. I, I love going out. I'm, I'm, I love to dance and I'm a, yeah, I'm a party girl. So, uh, having three kids, you need to do that. <laughs> you need to get out and enjoy yourself and it makes you regroup and come back and be, you know, a better mom for me anyways. Everybody has their ways. So anyways, the heel business, the, the whole, you know, look good, you know, change it up a little bit was for me. Um, very therapeutic and it still is very therapeutic because I really believe that when you when you look good on the outside and you take care of yourself you look in the mirror and, and you say damn I feel good I feel better like think about if you've ever had surgery or you know you've had a sickness and once you feel better once you're able to even get that really good bath or good shower like don't you feel so much better just you just feel good inside and I really think that when you feel good outside, it, it transcends into feeling better inside and helps you to heal. Positivity, you know, putting great food into your body, positive mental health, you know, keeping negative vibes and, and, and even negative people out of your life and staying positive is to me the best way to carry on and to, to stay healthy and live a good life and to turn around and be able to transcend and transfer that on to another person. If we all can just put a little positivity into the next person, you don't know what that can do for someone. So I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to just help everybody, not even everybody, it helps someone. If there's 10 people that watch this and only one person leaves saying, Pam, I want to, I want to, I want to talk about my, my issue right now. I, w I want someone to hear me because I've been bottling up inside, bottling it up inside. I need to get it out. If one person does that and another person does that, you watch. You watch and see what happens. So I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to, you know, hope that you will watch my videos. I'm going to try to do them monthly. It's going to just be like a really candid sit down talk with, with someone on a different issue every month. Um, because there's so many issues that we deal with and keep inside. And we keep them, you know, to ourselves, like how we keep... You know, when we write things in a diary, we keep those things to ourselves. A diary is private and we don't want to share it. So this is High Heel Diaries and we want to heal people. I want to help to heal people. I'm not a doctor. I'm not claiming to be. And I'm not going to send you away saying you're going to be good tomorrow or next week. But as long as you, you listen and hear my story and, you know, 
put it into practice into your life, put what I've learned into practice into your life as to how I healed, maybe you can help yourself heal as well. All right, so we'll follow me, like I said, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, of course here YouTube, and my website. All right, see you.